Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm still currently working on kind of setting up my channel and elaborating on some of my favorite things or my favorite books in certain categories. And recently I've kind of put in a lot of requests for newer poetry collections to review. And I realized that I can't just straight up review things without first telling you the kind of poetry that I love and talk about some of my favorite poetry collections from the past or some contemporary ones. So I'm going to try to cover that in this video and I'm going to cover my favorite poets, like in general, some of my favorite individual collections and some of my favorite newer poets that have emerged in more recent years. So hopefully you'll get an idea. Now I've mentioned in the past that my favorite writer of all times is Sylvia Plath. So it should come as no surprise that she is my number one. She is the center of my bookshelf and I have all of her works, including her drawings, her biographies, all of her poetry. I have combined um, Ariel and the Colossus in one binding and then had them bound myself and my cloth. I like to carry this with me. I've read these many, many times. I've annotated it heavily. Um, and I also have uh, the one I'd recommend really is the the manuscript sort of the restored edition where it shows you the initial manuscript that she left um, the day she killed herself on the desk. Um, she is my absolute favorite. I have many thoughts about Sylvia Plath and I have written a really long piece on her which I'll link down below if you are interested. But I will say that number one, I think what Sylvia Plath has become for poetry is very similar to what Harry Potter has become for um, children's literature, which is she kind of grew into this phenomenon of her own. Like, she's no longer just the person. Um, she's taken off. She's now symbolic for many things. And it's gotten out of their hands. Like, it's not controllable. And the second thing I'll say is that I think what's constantly slipping or eluding people when they discuss Sylvia Plath is that first and foremost she is a confessional poet and she is the queen and the dominating figure of the confessional poetry movement and on that note I would like to start by talking about my favorite poets which are other people in this confessional movement so the first one is Sylvia Plath but the second person whom I admire greatly and I love her work very much is Anne Sexton. So Transformations is probably her best work. This is the one that uh, won the Pulitzer Prize as well. I have a few of her collections. Highly recommend Anne Sexton. Um, and I also have The Awful Rowing Towards God and All My Pretty Ones. Uh, she is a contemporary of Plath's. And together, they also studied under Robert Lowell. He also has some poetry books out in the same movement. However, for me, he didn't strike as much of a chord. For me, some of his poems are kind of hit or miss. And another big one in the confessional poetry genre is uh, Allen Ginsberg. This is all of his poetry between 1947 and 1997. And his work is just phenomenal. I just love everything he's written. Obviously, Howell. Like, come on. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. How do you not want that tattooed on you right now? Then moving aside from the confessional poets, I really enjoyed the war poets. If I had to pick one from all of them, it would have to be Wilfred Owen. I have his collected poems here. Um, it's just, I think in this collection, you see a man who's just been broken and constantly looking and searching for beauty where there is none. That's all I'm gonna say. And another book that I've bound myself because I love her so much is Emily Dickinson. And I bound her in the same cloth that I did Sylvia Plath. So Emily Dickinson to me is a weird hybrid of romanticism and confessional poetry. And there's something to say about the fact that she didn't want any of her poems to be found. She, she worked a lot on her little fascicles and uh, the way she sewn them together and 
did little artistic projects for herself privately, not intending for them to be published at any point. Like Kafka, she's very private about her art, which makes you see the personal in her somewhat fantastical poetry. Um, I've had to do so many close readings of her poems in the past and they're just Honestly, it's like high fantasy mixed with the personal, mixed with so much symbolism and beauty and nature. It's just everything that I love. And like Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton, I find that Emily Dickinson poetry becomes ten times more interesting the more you read about her biography. She was one of those incredible figures, very solitary and amazing and just, I love her so much. And then the last individual poet that I love for all of his work is Rainer Maria Rilke. I cannot say it as wonderfully as Claudia can uh, in the proper German, but his works are phenomenal. I would strongly recommend his works translated by Stephen Mitchell and um, The Inner Sky which is a glorious collection of poetry and notes, poems from the graveyard. It's just beautiful. And then the last one, which I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend, is Letters to a Young Poet. This isn't exactly poetry, but he had a young friend who was a student. Rilke sent the student some of the most wonderful advice as a poet and as a guide in his life. There are ten of the most beautiful letters that you'll ever read. Um, so if you can pick this up from your library or just try to find it somewhere, it's honestly wonderful. So these three poets are poets where I like some of the poems and some I really don't. It's kind of like a 50-50 with these three. So they are W.H. Auden, uh, Robert Frost, and Philip Larkin. Uh, Philip Larkin was a librarian, fun fact. Um, for me, these three have some poems that just knock me out and I just want to write them down and read them again and again. And they have some of the most beautiful imagery and descriptive language in every possible way. They use the most elegant words. And then some poems that completely just, for me at least, I mean, obviously poetry is very personal, so I can't speak for everyone, but... For me, these are like a 50-50. Then I would like to mention um, two Romanian poets. So the first one is Romania's biggest poet. His name is Mihai Eminescu. But the problem for me is that I have not found the proper English translation of his works that do him justice. I tried. I tried to find some because I thought, you know, if I can, then I can talk to you about him and then link you to the right translation and then everyone's fine. I cannot find a proper translation where I feel like the translators have uh, done him justice. However, the second poet, that's also a Romanian poet, I did find the proper translation. So his name is Georgia Bakovia or George Bakovia and he is kind of like Edgar Allan Poe plus Baudelaire but like Romanian. Georgia Bakovia, like Rilke, they both write about loneliness and solitude with allusions to childhood, but they kind of focus a lot on kind of memories and time and, lo and loneliness. Now that we're done with individual poets that I love, I want to mention individual poetry collections. So the first one is Ted Hughes's birthday letters, for obvious reasons. Then um, Herman Hess, um, his Seasons of the Soul. I just want to read you an excerpt from this. It's about books. All the books in the world will not bring you happiness, but build a secret path toward your heart. And another individual collection is The Asylum Dance by John Burnside. I read this in one sitting. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, and I really enjoyed his work, The Dumb House. So I had to give his poetry collection a go. Another individual collection that I love is Sunstone by Octavio Paz. It's only very, very small. It's 66 pages long. Um, but it has a great translation in English by Elliot Weinberger. Um, so Sunstone is about the Aztec calendar. And it talks a lot about nature and history. And it's surrealist poetry. So it makes you feel just all the right things while you're reading it. And um, I'm going to link down the 
the right translation down below. Another book that I really enjoyed was Patterson by William Carlos Williams. I don't know if you've seen the movie Patterson recently, but it's a great film. You should definitely watch it. Um, but the, the, the movie is based on this poem. So the poem looks at this man named Patterson who lives in the city and it's heavily inspired by James Joyce's Ulysses who tried to show, you know, one man's journey through a single day in Dublin. And then Patterson wanted to do the same thing of one man's journey through the city and in a day and how he connects to the city. And it's such a wonderful epic um, in so many ways, and it's a great collection, worth your time. And then the last individual collection that I really enjoyed was a book I had to review in 2017, and it's called The Hour Wasp by Jay Sheets. I'm going to leave my review down below, but from what I recall, it was just kind of surrealist, dreamlike poetry, and it had so many allusions to nature and it almost made you feel like you were inside this like shaman's dream it was incredible and i really enjoyed it so i will leave links down below to that one as well and that said i'd also like to hear from you what are your favorite poets and uh, favorite poetry collections and um i'm hoping that in the future i will get to review a few more poetry collections. You will like that in the future. I'm sorry I didn't go into too much detail for any of these, but, but this video would be a million hours long.